Let's talk about smart masks in Substance Painter. So a smart mask, similar to a smart material, uses bake information to then create different effects and to apply the mask to the model in a specific way. So right now you can see that I have a bake on this model. Uh, if we actually go to the base color, you can see that this is just a very basic, kind of low poly model. So let's go back to the material. So the first thing to do to add a smart mask is you want a fill layer. And then I want to right click on that fill layer and add a black mask. And what I will do is I'll make this a color that's very noticeable. So I'll make it like bright red. Uh, so, okay, so right now nothing is showing through because it's just, you know, completely masked out. All right, so let's bring up the shelf. So you can go to window views shelf to bring it up. Then you want to go down to smart masks. And then you have all these different presets that do different things. So for example, if I drag and drop cavity rust onto the mask, what it does is it looks for cavities and then essentially adds, like mask, unmasks what's in cavities. So if this were shadows, for example, like let's say we just make this like shadows, now we kind of have quick and dirty shadows. And then the nice thing about smart masks is if you click on the mask, there will be a drop down and you can click on this and edit the actual mask itself. So you can add blur. So if you want it to be a kind of soft effect, you can do that. Uh, you can adjust the balance. So this controls how much it shows. You can invert it. So now it has the opposite effect so we could do something like let's say this was for highlights or some kind of color like almost like brickwork or something there's a lot of different things you can do with each, ma with each mask and each mask is different and there's texture turn invert off let me turn off blur because it'll be hard to see the texture so here's the texture you can see that it's starting to add kind of a grunge map to this effect to make it a little less strong, you know, to kind of break it up to some degree. There's also texture two in this case, and you can kind of play with it. There's AO for ambient occlusion. There's curvature. This video is brought to you by the Turbo Squid 3D Bros store. We add new models each week. We sell affordable game ready models. We include Unity and Unreal texture files, and we also include texture files at every resolution aside from 8K. Now back to the video. And then of course, world space normal. Now each one of these things, like ambient occlusion, curvature, world space normal, these and thickness, these are in your bake, right? And if you don't have a high, like a high detail model to bake, you can just bake without a model and it'll still give you like a kind of generic result. Uh, but if you, for example, have like a flat model, you won't get this detail without some kind of information, right? So like I actually sculpted this in ZBrush, all these little like bricks and stuff, so that when I brought this in, I had something to work with. But there's a bunch of different settings. Uh, there's also balance and contrast. You can always hit random on the seed to change the results as well. And the actual seed can be seen here and you can increase and decrease this. Uh, finding the specific seed number, like usually you just click random because there's like insane amounts of seeds and you're not gonna know these. <laughs> there's no way to memorize on these. I think there's like a few million or something. Like it's an insane amount. So, and then there's a different invert for the actual texture itself. So instead of inverting what it affects, in this case, the image input, it's inverting the effect itself. So you can see that it's kind of flipping some parts. And then in this case, there's this grunge rust fine, grunge rust dirty, or I'm sorry, grunge rough dirty. And you can see the inputs here. So it actually will show you these inputs. So for example, if I start removing inputs, like if I remove all this, then go back, world space not found, position not found, thickness not found, curvature not found, and then it will update 
and now you have nothing because it, it has nothing and it'll, you know, they'll have X's on it. So when you use smart masks, it'll tell you when you scroll down and click on it what it's missing. So then if I just go ahead and bake, uh, I'm actually just gonna undo, that'd probably be faster than baking it again <laughs> because it'll take like a minute or so. So now that we've added that information back in, it's just loading. It's able to look at the bake and apply these effects. So that is the big upside of smart masks and also smart masks are generally part of smart materials. So a material doesn't care about bake information, a smart material does and usually because it uses smart masks. And that is generally the difference between the two. So materials, smart masks and uh, smart materials are all related in some way. And you can use materials with a smart mask. Um, you can get weird results if it hits like seams and certain things like that and you have to know how to manage that but you can combine and mix them and let's say for example we want to try a new smart mask you can right click clear mask then let's try this like dirt one and you can experiment you can kind of see what the result will look like here so we can see that it's added dirt to like the top now the thing that's nice about this is let's say Let's add another fill layer. I'm just gonna make this kind of like medium gray. All right, and then we'll go back to this other fill layer and let's say we want highlights. Now we have quick and dirty highlights. So like each smart material, especially when you have good bake information that's like hand sculpted or like created in a way that helps you out for making this type of uh, model, you can use these smart, these smart masks to great effect because now I have like instant highlights. So if I just sculpt everything in ZBrush, and then I bake it, I can use, in this case, dust dirty to make highlights rapidly. And then I can combine it with cavity rust or something else to add shadow to the darker, uh, like pushed in, sculpted in parts. And that's all normal information. So like if I go to the side of the model, it's still a flat model, but we just have this information now that interacts with light and looks much better than you know without it so that is the those are the basics of smart masks you can play with them you can actually combine them too uh, there's different ways to do that i think that would be its own video but yeah that's it for this one definitely like and subscribe if you found this useful drop a comment let me know what you think and also feel free to suggest any 3d stock models that you need uh, because we are working on stock models, me and the guy that I work with on this channel. Um, so yeah, that's it for this one. And I'll see you in the next one.